so today we will discuss electric circuit the resistance and its parameter the capacitance and its parameter the inductance and parameters after that we will going to see the different energy sources their classification it includes ideal voltage source ideal current source after that we'll see a series and parallel combination of sources then we'll see a practical voltage source and practical current source and after that we will going to see a source transformation these are the very important points so let us start with electric current so you all know that what is electric current it is a flow of electron in a circuit so it is a closed path composed of active and passive element so electric circuit is a closed path made up of active and passive element so we'll see active and passive elements so the active element is nothing but what it supplies the energy to the circuit it means if there is in a circuit there is a battery or a current source then they will be acting as a active elements because they supplies the energy to the circuit that's why they are called as active element similarly the next point is passive element so the element which receives the energy and then either convert it into heat or stores in the form of magnetic or electric field so these elements are called as a passive elements so there are two elements active element that supplies the energy to the circuit and passive element that receives the energy and convert it into heat or stores it in electric field or magnetic field so depending upon the type they are classified as a resistance inductance and capacitance so the resistance inductor and capacitor are called as a passive element because they receives the energy and convert the energy from one form to another form or they stores the energy in the other form that they are called as a passive element so active element in any electric circuit is a current source or voltage source present is called as active element whereas passive element is nothing but the element connected resistance inductance or capacitance they are called as a passive elements we'll see the energy sources and their classification so there are two types of energy sources independent source and the dependent sources so we are having independent voltage source and independent current source they may be again classified as a dc source or ac source again they are classified as a ideal sources and a practical sources so this is the actual classification of energy sources the energy sources may be independent energy sources or dependent energy sources and we are having two quantities voltage and current so according to that the sources are classified as a voltage source and current source and we are using a two type of electric circuit dc direct current circuits and alternating current circuits circuits that's why they are classified again as dc sources and ac sources so these sources are again classified as a ideal sources and practical sources a 
will see the independent ideal voltage source. So you can see in your screen. So you can see independent ideal voltage source. So here a battery connected VS is connected across a load. So this is the electrical circuit where we connected battery of value Vs is called as the source voltage. So it is the active element and load is nothing but it may be any element, resistance, inductance or capacitance which receives the energy. So it is called as load. So source means the element which supplies the energy is called as source. The element which receives the energy is called as a load. So here in figure you can see an independent ideal voltage source and its characteristics. So here you can see that those determines the voltage but the current is determined by the load. So, so this is the very important note is that in electric circuit a source determines the voltage but the current is determined by the load. So this is the very important property of independent ideal source. The source has zero internal resistance. So we are having a simple battery, no any resistance is connected in series or a parallel. So it is called as the ideal voltage source. So this is very important property of ideal voltage source. It is that ideal voltage source has zero internal resistance. So this is the circuit representation and this is the characteristic voltage versus current. So you can see a straight line voltage over here. Now we'll see the symbolic representation of voltage sources, the various types. In figure A, you can see ideal DC voltage source. In figure B, ideal AC source. And in figure C, it is ideal battery. So the voltage source is said to be ideal if the output terminal are open such that current I is equal to zero. When a source is turned off, it means V equal to zero. So it will be equivalent to the short circuit. Clear? So here some identification marks are given reference mark. One terminal is mark plus and the other minus. Clear? When actual polarity is opposite to the reference mark, it means the voltage is a negative number. I will see the independent ideal current source. So you can see on your screen. So this is the symbolic representation of independent ideal current source and its characteristics. So in, on your screen, you can see in first figure, we have seen the voltage source is connected and across it, a load is connected. So the voltage source, the voltage will be considered as a source and the element which receives the energy is called as a load. So same circuit we have drawn here, but the sources has been changed. So here, the source is a current source. So you can easily identify a given source, either it is current source or a voltage source. How will you identify a given source is current source or voltage source? So you can identify according to its symbolic representation. So in case of voltage source, a polarity will be given plus minus. 
so we can identify the source as a voltage source and in case of current source instead of polarity a current direction will be given according to the arrow in a circle so which represents a given source is a current source so this is the independent ideal current source and its characteristic so irrespective of a load element its current remain constant you can see a current so here i indicate is is indicate what source current so the source current determines the current but the voltage is determined by the load it is exactly vice versa of voltage source in case of voltage source source decides the voltage whereas load decides the current in case of current source the source decides the current and a load decides the voltage or voltage is determined by the load okay. so this is uh, we are having one more property of current source is that a source has infinite internal resistance so this is very important conclusion from current source and voltage source okay these sources so this is the independent ideal current source and its characteristic now we'll see the symbolic representation for current source so in figure a you can see ideal dc current source it is represented by simple circle and arrow indicate the current direction in figure b you can see ideal ac current source so there is a difference between dc current source and ac current source so in case of dc there is a r only arrow and in case of ac a alternating sign is mentioned in a circle with arrow so it is called as ideal ac current source so we can see a current source is said to be ideal if the output terminal are shorted together such that voltage v is equal to 0 so when a current source is turned off it means current i is equal to 0 it means it is equivalent to the open circuit and here we can see the reference marks are an arrow is put when actual direction of current is opposite to the reference the current is a negative number now we'll see the role for current and voltage are interchange in the two sources so we have already seen this effect it is called a duality now we'll see the practical voltage source so till now we have seen ideal voltage source and ideal current source now we'll see the practical voltage source so in figure a you can see a circuit model for practical voltage source now by observing a circuit we can see in case of ideal source we are having only a source there will be a no resistance but in case of practical energy sources you can see there is an energy source voltage source and a resistance is connected in series with it so this is not externally connected resistance it is actually the internal resistance of the circuit or internal resistance of the source so in previous cases that is the ideal cases we are having only source only the source right so this is the practical voltage source so the practical voltage source can be represented by a voltage source with series resistance and here you can see the characteristic so in case of ideal source you will get a straight line 
whereas in case of practical source your voltage will go on dropping as well as current drops so this is the a practical source characteristic and this is the ideal source characteristic so in our syllabus we are having or we are dealing only with the ideal sources so here you can see vloc is the ideal source characteristic and this is the practical source characteristics so on the screen you can see that a practical voltage source is represented by ideal voltage source in series with internal resistance rsp so this is the symbolic representation of practical voltage source i will see a practical current source so this is the symbolic representation for practical current source so in case of practical voltage source we have seen a ideal voltage source is connected in series with the resistance whereas in case of practical current source the current source and a resistance are parallelly connected so in figure a we can see a circuit model for practical current source and in figure b we can see a characteristic for ideal current source and practical current source so for ideal current source you will get a straight line whereas in case of practical current source the current is decay as long as the circuit voltage increases so so this the dotted portion of a circuit shows the practical current source so it is modeled as a ideal current source in parallel with a internal resistance so this is the representation of practical current source we will see the important part that is the source transformation so while analyzing any electrical circuit we need to transform from voltage source to current source and we have to transform circuit from voltage source to current source so this conversion make a calculation easier so for that purpose we need a source transformation so it's a very simple thing so we can see that a practical current source can be converted into its equivalent practical voltage source and a vice versa so this conversion is valid only for external load connected across the terminal of the source so this is the source transformation we'll see the source transformation with the examples so now you can see that a simple source is given and a load is connected it is represented by rl so this combination can be represented like this or like that so here a same practical source that is voltage source ideal voltage source with internal resistance it will be considered as a source so voltage source representation and here a current source with connected with parallel internal resistance so it is current source representation so we can transform the voltage source with series resistance into equivalent current source with parallel resistance so this is the standard conversion the voltage source with series resistance can be converted into equivalent current source with parallel resistance so on a top side you can see a voltage source representation and on a bottom side we can see a current source representation so this is very simple logic a voltage source with series resistance can be transformed into equivalent current source with parallel resistance now we'll see the equivalence between voltage source and current source the two sources will be equivalent 
if they produce identical values of the L and IL. So if they produce equivalent value of voltage and current, then we can say the two sources are equivalent to each other. So by using Ohm's law, we can calculate the current V by R or by multiplying the resistance with current, we will get the circuit voltage. So if these conditions are satisfied, then we can say these two sources are equivalent to each other. So this is possible only if RSV is equal to RSI equal to RS. Now we'll see a series and parallel combination of sources. So here a question is, what would be the net EMF of the combination if two ideal sources of two volt and four volt are connected in series, so as to add each other? So here we have to calculate the net EMF. The two voltage sources, two volt and four volt, they are connected in series. So what will be the net voltage? It's simply the addition of two sources because they are connected in series. So the net voltage will be a six volt. Now the next question is what would be the net EMF of the combination if two ideal sources of 4 volt and 4 volt are connected in parallel? Three volt, sir. Three volt. In the answer. How you decide how to how will you decide the apply like the mean gates? I thought to Mala Sangi, the Nami. The city circuit with the guys, so is there upon n number of batteries connected with the camera? The battery to voltage is add on circuit, but circuit with the current carana same run. The voltage circuit, sorry, parallel circuit with the guy will know the Mala. The n number of branches is still there. N number of branches madhe flow nara current kya hoshak to vek vek rasu shak to but voltage kya raila bhai the same raila bhai so he he mahatwa chan important property iti sangna saati bhi haa vek raha example ghetla parallel saati don ki ek case madhe sangi thila ki doni sources 4 volt chhe hoote yaani parallel madhe connect kele tera apne la kaya tha same value hoote 4 volt chhe ata iti sources ideal ahe ani dogan cha value vek vek raha hai कि एक टू वोल्ट ची बैटरी आया है और एक फोर वोल्ट ची बैटरी आया है पहले पैनल मरे करेक्ट के ना तो वोल्टेज कितनी है ना टू वोल्ट है ना फोर वोल्ट है ना थ्री वोल्ट है ना तो तुमसे बनना है कि मीन एल दो बार से मतलब टू वोल्ट है नहीं फोर वोल्ट तीन वोल्ट है ना सब तो क्या कर दी अपना � the ideal voltage source in parallel are permissible only when each has the same terminal voltage at every instant of time. So if we wish to connect batteries in parallel, so there must be a same value for both the batteries. If we use a different value batteries and we try to connect in parallel, it becomes wrong. Now we'll see the effect ideal voltage source connected in series. So just remember this. So between terminal A and B, the two batteries are there represented by VA and VB. So their equivalent will be what? It's a single battery. So the two source connected in series can be added. So this is the property of series connected batteries. If two batteries are connected in series, then the net EMF will be the addition of two batteries. So this is the actual connection and this is the equivalent connection. So 
I'll see the ideal current source connected in parallel. So if the current source are connected in parallel, then their result will be simply the addition. Right. In case of parallel circuit, the current splits and the total current will be the simply the summation. So if the two sources are connected in parallel, the such circuit can be reduced to a single source by simply taking the addition of the two sources. So the net source will be the I1 plus I2. So these are the, the practical current source connected in series. So we know that a practical current source is represented by ideal current source connected in parallel with its internal resistance. So current source with parallel resistance. Here again, we can see a second current source and across there is a resistance connected. So these two current sources are practical current sources. So first of all, we have to use a source transformation where this current source with parallel resistance can be transformed to equivalent voltage source with series resistance. Similarly over here, a current source I2 and internal resistance R2 will be replaced by ideal voltage source with series resistance. So after that, you can see the two sources are connected in series. So simply we can add the two sources. The total voltage will be what? V1 plus V2. And again, the two resistances are in series. So the equivalent resistance will be the addition. So after this conversion, that this original circuit will be reduced to this form. And then we will transform this voltage source with series resistance can be transformed into equivalent current source and parallel resistance, where the value of the source can be determined with the help of Ohm's law. If we are interested in calculating the current, it's simply the value P divided by R. And if you are interested to calculate voltage, it's simply the multiplication of given resistance and current. So this is the practical current source connected in series. So these are the another examples. practical voltage source connected in parallel. So this is the practical source one, practical source two. They are connected in parallel. So first we'll convert, we apply source transformation for first source and source transformation for source two. So this is the reduced circuit or simplified circuit after source transformation. So we can say the voltage source V1 with series resistance R1 can be replaced by equivalent current source I1. The value of I1 can be obtained by taking the ratio of V1 by R1. So the V1 by R1 will use us the equivalent current and will connect the same resistance R1 in parallel. So this is the source transformation for practical voltage source one. Similarly, this is the source transformation for practical voltage source two, where the practical voltage source E2 with series resistance R2 can be replaced by equivalent current source with parallel resistance. And after that, we can see this series circuit is transformed to a parallel circuit where the two current sources are connected in parallel. 
So if there are two sources connected in parallel, then we can add them. So we'll get the equivalent current source will be the simply addition of source, current source one and current source two. And the two resistances are connected in parallel. So their net resistance will be what? A multiplication of two resistance divided by addition of two resistance will give us the equivalent resistance. So the this combination of circuit can be represented like this. So D be the simplification of practical voltage source. So this is the question. Take a screenshot of it and try to find out the answer. So we have to reduce the circuit to its simplest possible form by using source transformation. So we have to transform the circuit into a simple single source with single resistance. So it will be your homework. 